Welcome back. So in the last video, we had our environment set up on our local machine. Now we're gonna look at actually installing Laravel with Laravel Jetstream and Inertia JS. So first thing we need to do is go to the Laravel website and click on installation, which we did in the previous video. So we need to look here and see what we need to do. There are different ways of installing Laravel and you might find a certain way better than another, but we're gonna do it using the default Laravel installer. So first things first is we're gonna to have to, well, install PHP and the Laravel installer. You may have this already installed, PHP. If you don't, just run this command. So select which environment you're in and then copy that. And if you go over to Visual Studio Code and you wanna find where we wanna install it, okay? So you can do it globally, but we're just gonna, for simplicity, create a folder, and that's gonna have all of our Laravel projects in it. We're just making one in this video, or in this series of videos. So I'm just gonna make a directory. You can do this in Finder or File Explorer, but it's good to get used to using these commands. So I'm just gonna show you how I would do it. So I'm gonna say, make directory, M-K-D-I-R. This is gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna say laravel-projects, enter. And now if I press ls, enter ls, that's gonna list all of the folders in the current directory and we're gonna see Laravel projects. And then you can do cd, which is change directory. And then if I put Laravel, and if just a little hint, if you press tab, once you start typing, it will auto fill the rest of the folder for you enter or return, and now we're in our directory. Clear, and that's gonna clear that, okay? So now we wanna just have a look at this. So I've already installed PHP. I don't know if I've installed the Laravel installer. Let's do it and see if we come across any problems. So I'm just gonna paste that in there, run the command, and let that do its thing. If you do come across any problems, you can sometimes come across problems, I'll be a real you when you're installing stuff, because everyone's local machine is different, has different configurations. Just drop me a message or leave a comment and I'll do my best to help you if I can, okay? It can be frustrating when things don't work as you expected, uh, as expected, but yeah, drop me a message and I'll try and help you. That is installed. Let's see what we need to do next. Creating an application. So let's see if this works. So you've got this Laravel command, new, and then the name of our application. So we're just gonna say, copy that, paste it in, Laravel, new, and we're gonna call our application, course application. Or courses, let's just call it courses. Okay, our first problem, wonderful. So, command not found Laravel. Okay, because I'm doing this in a new user area on my MacBook, I need to create a new file. You may already have this file, so this should be in the home directory. Um, I'll put a link to this web page here that's got instructions on how to solve this problem. We're gonna try and do it ourselves. So, we're just gonna basically create this file so I'm gonna do it in terminal here. So we need to CD and we wanna to go to this directory here. And we wanna then go touch, this is to create a file. And it needs to be dot zshrc. And now we wanna open dot z da, 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 sh rc app visual studio code it helps if I could spell okay and now we was we want to put a line in there 
just going to copy that and paste it in there. Save that. Save the file, changes, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and now I'm gonna basically close down these terminals. And we're gonna do a new terminal. And now we're gonna go to our Laravel project. And I'm just gonna run Laravel and see what happens. So that's now working, okay. So that's what we needed to do to get that working. So what we can do now is go Laravel, new, and we're gonna say courses. And then we can just go through here. Wow, so this is actually different from when I've done it before. I had to manually install Jetstream. So what we're gonna do here is go down to Laravel Jetstream with view inertia, view and inertia. Would you like to add optional features? So we're gonna actually add email verification but it's, easy, it's, it's good to know we can change this very easily in the app. There's a config file with all of this. We can just uncomment things. Um, and that's actually it. We don't want team support for our case here. And we don't want inertia server side rendering. Uh, so we're just gonna press enter. I'm not gonna select any of that. Oh, let's just do that. And then we're gonna let that install. So that's gonna do its thing. And once that's installed, we'll open it up, link it to our local database, which we also need to create, and we'll get it running on our local machine. And you're gonna see just how quick and simple that can be. Password. I'm not entirely sure what this is. I'm just gonna put a password. Again, this is the first time I've actually had to do this. Oh, for our database, okay. Okay, I wish I didn't do that password, but that's fine. So we're gonna select MySQL. Default database updated. Would you like to run the default database migrations? We're gonna say no because our database doesn't actually exist yet. And I'll show you exactly how to do that afterwards. This is amazing, by the way. How simple is this? It just tells you, talks you through each option. To be honest with you, this is more simple than I thought it was gonna be, because this is the first time I've done it and it's asked me these questions. I normally have to manually do each step, so you're in luck. You're in luck. Technology, technology is getting better. Thanks, Laravel. This may take a little while. It's installing a lot of stuff, so don't panic that it's taking ages. You're gonna get asked about the migrations again. We're gonna say no again. Right, so now we have installed our Laravel application. We are going to create a database. So let's just close that down. Go to phpMyAdmin. If you need a reminder, go to MAMP or exam. That needs to be running, so it will say stop there. Then go to web start, and then come down to MySQL, and then phpMyAdmin. And what we're gonna do is go databases, and you're gonna give your database a name here. So we're gonna say courses, because that's what our web application is gonna be for, courses. Great, you can call that anything you want. And then go back to our Visual Studio code. And now we're just gonna open our newly created project. So if we do run an ls command, you're gonna see courses in there, okay? That's the one we've just made. So we're gonna go cd courses. And now we can say open and use a dot and then you do dash A for application, tells you which app to open it with. And then we're gonna say visual backslash space studio backslash space code. And that's gonna open our new application. 
And what we can do now is close down the previous one. And the first thing we want to do is come to our, just say yes to that, .env file here. And this is going to have the information we need to link our web application to our database. So you just basically come to this section here and we're going to change a couple of the details. So the database port is actually 8889 because if we go to our web start page, you can see here port 8889. The username is root, the password is root. So let's just put those bits of information there. So the database name is courses. That was actually set when we ran the Laravel installation, so that's good. Already got the username root, password root. Save that. And now what we need to do is run a terminal. So if we did this in a different order, if we had already created our database, we could have run these migrations in the installation process, but we didn't. So what we're going to do now is run php artisan. So this artisan command is a Laravel command. So it's basically it allows us to do lots of magical stuff with Laravel. So php artisan migrate. Run that. And if it works, we know, which it has worked, our database is linked to our application. So if we come back to our database here and refresh the page, we're now going to see all our tables for our Laravel application. I tell a lie. If we come to courses, which is the database we created just now, if you go to that database that you created, you're now going to see all of the tables associated with your Laravel application, which is really good. So we're actually getting somewhere. So we now need to run a couple more commands. We're going to say npm install. So this is going to install any npm packages. We're going to do npm run build. So this is going to create all of our build files. And now we can do php artisan serve. And this is going to start serving our application, which is going to allow us to actually view it. So we can see it's running there. Now, if we go to a new tab and say local host colon 8000, and the reason for 8000 is it tells you here, 8000. So you could go to this exact link here and do the same thing. So let's just copy that and do it. But local host 8000 works the same. Paste that in there. And we're going to hopefully see our Laravel application. We do see it. One other thing just to get us started. Open up a new terminal by pressing this little plus here. And we're going to do npm run dev. And what this does is it basically watches for any changes that we make on the front end. So when we make some changes in the files that are going to be displayed on our website, it will automatically recompile our code for us. So we don't have to keep running npm run build each time to see those updates. So this is actually really helpful. So congratulations, you're now the owner of a local Laravel web application. Well done, well done. You're in a good position, you're in a good position. So join me next time and we will take the next step.